I'm an, I'm an emergency, uh, I work for emergency services, yep. and my political masters have told me to take a 1% pay rise yep. for the last few years, which I've suffered, like you have as MPs. Yep. You've sense of timing now with this uh, £10,000 pay increase in credit, and I do appreciate that you have refused, or you have stated that you would not take the pay rise, like Mr Cameron, but really, if we're all in it together, how can this possibly be? On the day of all days, when you're looking to shut... 10 fire stations in London and 500 firefighters jobs redundant. The sense of timing is incredible, Mm. you and all the other MPs have. Well, look, Jim, I, I agree with a lot of what you say. Uh, I mean, look, we'll see what Ips has to say. <clears throat> As you acknowledge yourself, they're independent. Um, they're independent because the fact, you know, because we got ourselves into trouble in the first place by MPs being judge and jury of their own sort of pay and rations. Um, so we'll see what they've got to say. But, uh, I mean, the reason I've said I wouldn't accept um, uh, such a pay increase that's been... That's been uh, so sort of talked about uh, at this time is because, as you quite rightly say, you, you know, I represent many, many constituents in my constituency in Sheffield, as do <coughs> MPs across the country, who, as you say, have either had a pay freeze or have had a, a limit put on their pay increases to 1%. Now, that might change, you know, when things get better. But we're in the middle of this massive repair job because of the this cardiac arrest that our economy suffered back in 2008. We're trying to do it as, as fairly as possible. We're trying to keep everybody together, if you like. And I just don't think it, it helps at all in doing that by taking one very, very small but very prominent part of the public se- people on the public sector payroll, MPs, and say, look, you're going to be treated completely differently to nurses, doctors, firemen, fire, firewomen, everybody working in the public sector. I really do think if we're going to have an approach towards the public sector, that everybody's got to be treated as, as fairly and equally as possible in the public sector. Jim? But my point is, Mr. Clegg, though, the reason why I've got an independent review is because none of the MPs, all 650 of them, could be trusted to return their yeah. uh, invoices and, and various things. So that's why you've got an independent yeah. review, because in the first place, you couldn't look after your own finances, yeah. all of you. Yeah. So therefore, why should the rest of us all suffer because of the incompetence uh, of, of, of the MPs? You're our leaders, and we yeah. take our lead from you. So yeah. why should we all suffer? All because some people are claiming for duck ponds, and, uh, you know, fictitious dinners and well, what hang, hang, no, It well, doesn't make sense. Yeah, no, Jim, well, hang on, I don't think you're... Look, I don't think the fact that we've got pay restraints in the public sector generally is because some MP claim money for a, a duck house. I mean, let's be clear, the reason why we have, as a coalition government said, right at the outset... And by the way, one of the first decisions that David Cameron and I took, I think one of the first cabinet meetings, was to cut ministerial pay by 5%. And we've stuck to that ever since. Why have we done that? Because we think that if we want to keep as many people in the public sector in work through this very, very difficult time, as we're having to trim the amount of money we spend on public spending, then the way to do that is to have some restraint on on public sector pay. And the where so you know, that's the background to all of this. Where I completely agree with you, Jim, is you just I just don't think you can. I think it is incomprehensible that given that, that is the context in which we are operating as a country, as a society, as a community of, of, of people who all look out for each other, I just find it incomprehensible that you say, well you're gonna pluck out the politicians who've taken that decision. Um, for, for millions of public sector workers and say, well, you're going to be treated differently. So what can you do about it, Mr Clegg? Well, look, what it's a cons- you be telling it's a, your well, colleagues? Well, I'll tell you exactly what. It's a consultation, Jim, and I'd strongly urge you, and indeed anybody else listening to this, listen to what IPSA have to say. They... You know, they have to discharge their duties it's independently. Independent then Authority, there's going to be Clay. some period of time, I don't exactly know how long it is, but, but uh, you know, a, a significant period of time where they then will receive comments from, from you and from any anyone else, any other member of the public, and, and make your views known. I have made my uh, views known, if you like, up front, which is that not that, not that I'm sort of... Not that I'm saying that, you, that, that the arrangements are just like a tablet of stone. Of course they must and, and may have to change over time. And there is, of course, this balance between what people get in pay and what they get in expenses and pensions. You need to look at it as a package. But, here's the big but, we are in unprecedented times at the moment. I cannot remember a time in modern years where so many millions of people who are getting out every morning, working hard in the public sector to keep our public services going, have been uh, put under such a prolonged period of public sector pay restraint. That is, to put it mildly, about the worst time in which you seek then to advocate that MP should get a double-digit pay increase. And were it to go ahead, were it to go ahead, would you advise your members not to take the cash? Well, look, as I say, I think I'm hopeful that with the consultation that we that we align the way in which MPs are treated more closely with the way people are treated in the public. So that's what I'm aiming for, OK? I've said very upfront, speaking for myself, sure. personally, but 
you know, let's remember, I'm luckier than many other MPs because I'm on a ministerial uh, salary. But I've said I would not, I would not be able to accept a um, such a significant pay increase myself when so many people that I represent as a constituency MP in South West Sheffield. But what have other Lib Dems lost you, Mr. Clegg, on this? What, well, would, I say, you, what uh, would you tell them? I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell MPs what to do out of okay. process, which is run independently of MPs. What I am urging people to do is, if you feel strongly about this. I feel strongly about this. Make your views known in the consultation. 